As you may know, the Aero India exhibition has started from today in Bengaluru, India. This exhibition happens every two years. It is a five-day event. It is one of the largest and most prestigious aerospace exhibitions in Asia. It is organized by the Ministry of Defence. The whole purpose of this exhibition is to showcase latest developments and innovations in the aerospace industry, including aircrafts, helicopters, unmanned aerial vehicles, then avionics and aeronautical systems. It also provides a platform for various countries to display their aerospace capabilities and technologies, as well as opportunities for business and trade. The exhibition attracts a large number of participants from the aerospace industry, including manufacturers, suppliers, and service providers. Now, as you may have seen the title of this video, India is actively pursuing to modernize its military, especially the Indian Air Force, by enhancing its aerospace capabilities. Now, let me tell you a little bit about fifth generation fighter jets. It is very important to note what a fifth generation fighter jet means. I'm not going to explain each and every feature in detail. What you can do is pause the video and read about each features. I'll write it in layman words so that you can understand it better. A fifth generation fighter jet is a highly advanced and technologically sophisticated aircraft that features stealth capabilities, supersonic cruising speeds, advanced sensor and avionics, and the ability to carry out wide range of missions. Now, because of the advanced capabilities of a fifth generation aircraft, India would be able to better defend its airspace and undertake a wide range of missions, including air to air and air to ground missions. India currently has two options. One, indigenously develop its own fifth generation fighter jet and two, explore the possibility of procuring a fifth generation fighter jet from other countries. Hindustan Aeronautic Limited is the organization that is going to get the responsibility to work on fifth generation fighter jet if India plans to develop this aircraft at home. But then if at all India wants to procure this fighter jet from other countries, then there are few countries who are there on India's watch list. I'm going to name them one by one. The first one is, of course, and obviously Russia. Russia's Su-57 is a fifth generation fighter jet. Surprisingly, this jet is also going to be displayed in this Aero India exhibition. The second one is United States F-35A Lightning II, which is also a fifth generation aircraft. And they're also displaying F-21 fighter jet. F-21 is not a fifth generation, but then it is configured with the latest sensors and avionic systems. The third one is Swedish Saab Gripen E series fighter jets. Although Gripen is not a fifth generation stealth aircraft, we can call it 4.5 generation fighter. And the United States is also going to present their FA-18 Hornet. Hornet is a fourth generation aircraft, but then it is being displayed not for the Indian Air Force, but I believe it is for the Indian Navy. I think the Indian Navy needs aircraft to be landed on the indigenously built INS Vikrant. Even the French Rafael M series aircraft will also be there in this exhibition. Again, it is being marketed for the Indian Navy. So overall, these are the major aircrafts that will be displayed in this year's air exhibition. If you look at all these fighter jets, you will realize that these are 4th generation, 4.5 and 5th generation. Now obviously the higher the generation, more expensive the jet is going to be. Then you also have to think about the maintenance, operational cost, spare parts and many other things. So every country's air force has to think about all these matters and then find a suitable variant for their service. It is not like go for the top end and acquire the best. After all money matters. So if you look at all these aircrafts, the best option for the Indian Air Force, if at all they want a fifth generation aircraft, is to either go with Russia or United States. As of now, the United States has two fifth generation fighter jets and they are F-35A Lightning II and the F-22 Raptor, which is nowadays engaged in shooting balloons and UFOs. But then United States has a law which does not allow the sale of F-22 aircrafts. That means F-22 aircraft is strictly for the United States Air Force as of now. They may change their rules in future, but as of now, F-22 is not meant for any other country. So India is only left with two options. Russian Sukhoi 57E, E stands for export variant and United States F-35A Lightning II. And everyone knows in the world, if not in the world, at least in Bharat. Every Bharatiya knows that United States aircraft or any military equipment is much much expensive compared to Russians. Just to give you a rough estimate, Su-57 is somewhere around 50 to 60 million dollar and the F-35A Lightning II is around 80 to 100 million dollar. And do you know why United States military equipments are expensive? 
because almost everything is being made by private companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, etc. On the other hand, if you look at Russia, Sukhoi is one of the largest aerospace companies in Russia, which is a subsidiary of the state-owned United Aircraft Corporation. That is why there is a huge price difference between both countries. On top of it, Russia has always been India's good and reliable friend. And Russia is also a reliable supplier of weapons, unlike United States. Because whether you like it or not, United States uses trade as a weapon. In other words, the US government uses trade as a tool of foreign policy rather than as economic goal. Now you may say, what's wrong in it? Everyone does it. Well, yes, everyone does it. But then diplomacy is not just about self-interest. There is some dignity even in hatred. For example, if you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, despite whatever United States, UK, G7, European Union countries have been doing against Russia, Russia is still supplying oil and gas indirectly to these countries. Don't you think Russia did not get the idea of stopping oil and gas completely and make Europe rot in cold chilling winter? But I know some of you will even say, Russia needs money because they have sanctions. So they have no other choice but to sell oil and gas indirectly to Europe. Well, that is not a valid argument. There are many countries in the East willing to buy Russian oil and gas. After one year of numerous sanctions, humiliation, isolation and narrative building, the collective West is still not able to bring down Russia on its knees. And the interesting thing is, United States and European Union sanctions on Russian oil exports do not apply to refined products produced from Russian crude exported from a third country, as they are not of Russian origin. This is called diplomatic language. So more than Russia, the Western country, that is Europe and America, they need Russian oil. That is why I said there should be some dignity even in hatred. This philosophy will not make sense in Western world. That is why for India, Bharat, Russia is the brilliant resource available. Now procurement is going to be expensive, depending on Indian Air Force demands. But the end result is going to be worthwhile. Both the Indian government as well as Russian government are led by patriotic people. And their collaboration will definitely enhance defense partnership and bring fifth generation fighter jets to India and other things can be taken care by negotiations. Hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.